Coming up on the Angus Report, tips to boost a stalker operation's bottom line. Could gene editing speed up genetic progress in the beef industry? Learn more about the American Angus Association's new feeder cattle program, Angus Link. And the Angus Beef Bulletin has officially unveiled its exciting new look. This is the Angus Report. Welcome to the Angus Report. I'm Bob Cervera. And I'm Clint Mefford. Today, we're talking about expanding profitability for the beef cattle stocker operation. Rachel Robinson has more. When you're trying to maximize profitability while keeping your animals healthy, it's important to remember that optimizing cattle performance is key. That was University of Arkansas animal science professor Paul Beck's message at the Beringer Ingelheim Stocker Summit. He says the key to profitability in the stocker industry is increasing animal performance and decreasing costs. Doing that will increase your stocker operations success. One of the biggest misconceptions is uh, decreasing the, the total cost of a program as, as far as decreasing the investment per acre uh, or the total ration cost in, in feeding programs. If we are to provide inputs into pastures, whether it be supplementation or fertilization, we may increase our total cost of the operation, but we're going to decrease the cost of gain uh, of our cattle because we're increasing performance. And with this increased performance, we can uh, increase the amount of product sold and, and thus increase profitability. Uh, if we have a higher ration cost because we have higher quality uh, ingredients that produce more gain and produce that gain more efficiently, we can, we can have similar increases in profitability through increased performance and increased efficiency. Beck says increased profit potential is possible when retaining ownership through the yearling phase. If we can retain ownership at least through the you know, yearling phase to make them heavyweight feeders, uh, we can uh, gain the profit from that improved genetics and have a lot more uh, sellable body weight coming from the same uh, land area on a ranch. Beck encourages producers to know their operations risks and to have a financial plan in place. We can use uh, growth promoting technologies, we can use uh, ration balancing and other scientific principles to improve performance and maintain performance. You know, that alleviates a lot of our production type risks. But we've also got price volatility risk and, you know, we can use forward contracting, we can use, uh, you know, the futures market um, and to offset the, the risk with that. And there was also some, you know, government insurance programs, uh, livestock risk protection insurance type programs to uh, decrease the risks uh, producers have as far as price risk. Along with that, the weather risk is always a concern and there are some uh, crop insurance mechanisms for that as well. Consider the inputs that increase performance and decrease cost. You know, we can have a lot bigger impact on profitability with a 5% change in uh, gain or 5% or change in ration costs than we will with a 5% uh, change in, in morbidity. So uh, not saying lose sight of, of health, uh, you know, that's always important, but also we shouldn't lose sight of, uh, you know, those production efficiencies. Contact your local extension agent to learn more about the options for profitability of stalker cattle. New research from Texas A&M University shows the modern U.S. beef production model efficiently uses natural resources. The study looked at three production phases in the cattle industry, cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot. The Texas A&M team developed a model to estimate beef's contribution to human food supply while looking at net protein contribution and methane production. The study found the beef industry produces more protein than it consumes. The cow-calf sector uses the least amount of protein humans can consume. Texas A&M researchers concluded the beef production system is a net contributor to the human protein supply and likely a more efficient converter than non-ruminant animals. The study notes the importance of understanding beef's contribution of quality protein to the human food supply compared to other protein sources like plant-based proteins. Consumers can be more confident when selecting beef as their protein source because of the positive impact the beef industry has on natural resources. Contact Texas A&M Animal Science for more information. Gene editing is a promising technology many people in the beef industry are embracing. But what exactly is it? Recombinetics Executive Vice President Mitch Abrahamson has the answer. Yeah, so gene editing, we use the cell's natural repair process 
and we direct that repair process to correct specific bases of DNA such that we're able to look at genes that already occur in species and we move those genes and alleles into animals that are uh, elite genetics that the breeding companies use to support our food production system. There's a difference between gene editing and genetically modified organisms. Abrahamson explains. Traditionally, we use the word GMO to talk about transgenic animals, where we take a gene from one species and move it into another. Our program has all evolved around looking at natural variation that occurs within a species and using the natural repair process in that species to modify a gene such way that we actually keep the gene uh, variation within that species and exploit the ability of uh, that edit to perform differently uh, in our lead animals. Gene editing is an innovative way to address consumer concerns about animal agriculture. Typically, today's animal breeding companies are really focused on production traits, but there's lots of issues around health and welfare that are difficult to address with our traditional breeding program. And gene editing uh, is a technology that allows us to really address these traits that are important for how we raise our animals and important to the health and well-being of the animals. And we're able to accelerate the breeding program in such a way that we're delivering a product that is both safe uh, for humans as well as very friendly and, and, and uh, healthy for the animals. Recombinetics uses gene editing technology to find modern solutions to issues ranchers face every day. So other things that we're working on today um, are issues around heat tolerance. Um, a lot of the tropical production, both in beef and dairy, uh, suffer because the genetics uh, that are present and adapt to those environments aren't very efficient. When we do put our efficient animals down in those environments, they are not adapted to the heat, they're not adapted to some of the disease states. So we're able to use our gene editing technology to move those genes and variations that occur in those local or regional breeds and move those into our elite animals as well to address some of the issues around not only the welfare of the animal, but our issues around environmental impact and production. Gene editing holds a lot of promise, not only for the livestock industry, but for the medical field and beyond. Unfortunately, gene editing faces criticism from people who don't understand the science. Recently, the European Union ruled that gene edited crops should fall under laws that restrict GMO crop use. The EU court decision was applauded by many anti-GMO activists, but it was a disappointing verdict for the Biotechnology Innovation Organization and many animal genetics companies. Back in the U.S., gene editing has no regulations that define how or how not to use the technology. Visit Recombinetics.com for more information on gene editing. We have all heard the statistic. Farmers and ranchers will have to feed 9 billion people by the year 2050. But Sarah Menker, founder of Grow Intelligence, thinks a food crisis will happen within the next decade. She says unless producers completely restructure the agriculture industry, demand will surpass the global capacity to produce food. She estimates a 214 trillion calorie shortage will happen by 2027. Menker says the calorie deficit could be less severe if farmers and ranchers take the right actions now. Grow Intelligence could help reduce the deficit by making big data analysis available to producers. Menker and Grow Intelligence calculated the tipping point for food security by looking at crop production data analysis, human populations, and rising economic prosperity in many countries. By 2023, Africa, India, and China will house half of the world's population. Menker thinks Africa can increase corn production, which is at North American 1940 levels right now. She says, quote, for the first time ever, the most critical tool for success in agriculture, data and knowledge, is becoming cheaper by the day. Visit grow-intelligence.com to learn more. Stay tuned. The Angus Report will be back after this. The American Angus Association's 13 regional managers are a hotline to St. Joseph, Missouri. They help Angus breeders conduct sales, and they are the boots on the ground voice of the association in their region. Kirk Kangas, regional manager for Alaska, Montana, and Wyoming, joins us today for a new segment on the show, the Angus Market Report. During this segment, we'll share Angus sales data to keep you in the know. Welcome to the show, Kurt. So, Kurt, um, tell us a little bit about your region. Well, my region is uh, is pretty much that the Montana, Wyoming, don't get to go to Alaska a lot. It's, uh, we sell, we're the largest wholesale region in the United States, uh, marketing roughly 20% of the bulls that are reported to the association come out of Montana and Wyoming. And, uh, pretty active in the feeder calf markets, pretty active in the replacement female markets. One of the main things that you do um, during the summer months is, of course, you have a heavy uh, summer sales season. 
um, as far as feeder cattle sales go. Give us a little bit of perspective on that and how it's gone so far. We have three major video, co four major video companies that operate in the region being Western Video, uh, Northern Livestock Video, Superior, and Cattle Country Video. Um, all three markets are, are, are a forward contract type market system where we're in the, you know, from June to August, we are marketing cattle that will be delivered in anywhere from, you know, the next day to out in December to February now. Uh, market prices have been really strong this year. The program cattle, reputation cattle, as usual, have sold very, very well. Producers have been very happy that if the program in HTC Gap cattle in July were, were really, really, really well marketed, then, then buyers are really after those cattle right. in July. Tell us a little bit about what, um, what some of the reception has been towards Angus Link and Angus Source calves as you've, as you've gone along. But the uh, Angus Link calves, we had the first, first draft of those sold in July at the Northern Livestock Video Sale there in Billings. And they were they were well received. They were cattle out of Nebraska. Um, they would be toward the upper end on their price range for for what they for that market they were offered in. Uh, the NH the, the Angus Source calves they've sold. You know that program has added a lot of value to people's cattle offering the NHTC program and the the Never Ever program um, through any of the video companies or any sale barn. Those those cattle have been well received. Also, as those as those programs have had a lot of demand from the uh, feeders. Well, thanks, Kurt, for an in-depth look into your region. I hope things go well for you uh, for the fall. Well, thanks for having me on, Clint. I really appreciate it and, and, and look forward to having a great sale season coming up and, and seeing everybody on the road. Very good. Well, don't hesitate to reach out to your regional manager to see what they can do for you. Hello, I'm Troy Bockelman with the Cattle Facts Update. Increased cattle slaughter and trade tensions with major export partners have pressured the hide and offal values to the lowest prices in nearly 10 years. The hide and offal values are considered the drop credit and combined with the beef sales determine the wholesale value of a fed animal. As the cattle market made its cycle highs in late 2014, the hide and offal value also reached a record high $16.74 per hundredweight in September of 2014. As cattle prices decreased, so did the drop credit, reaching a low of $10.40 per hundredweight in January of 2016. This low held for nearly two years until in November 2017, a new low of $10.05 was made. After seasonal strength to the drop credit this spring, back to $10.70 per hundredweight in January, the drop credit has moved lower. The drop credit made a new low of $9.11 per hundredweight in July. This was the lowest point since January 2010. As approximately 40 to 45% of the drop credit is the value of hides, much of the recent decline in the drop credit is a result of a declining hide value. As the cattle industry expands and there are more cattle available for harvest, the supply of hides available has pressured the market. The value of the hide for the first week of August was $3.07 per hundredweight on a live basis, down nearly $1.50 from the first of the year and the lowest since 2009. Just like the beef market, hides are also export dependent and China is the largest importer of U.S. hides, followed by Mexico, Thailand and South Korea, with over 90% of hides going to these four markets. In June, total hide exports were 1.57 million pieces. This was down from 1.68 million pieces a year ago. Through June, total hide exports are down 3% or 300,000 pieces. With ongoing NAFTA negotiations and the tariff war with China, it'll be important to watch export market developments as these could have an effect on the value of the drop credit. As packer margins are historically strong, the packer has not felt the need to defend the drop credit. It'll be important that trade tensions soften and the global economy remains strong or continued pressure could occur in the hide and offal market. As should the packer margins tighten, the packer could feel the need to pass the price pressure of the drop credit to the fed cattle market. For the Angus Report and Cattle Facts, I'm Troy Bockelman. To learn more about Cattle Facts, your leading source for beef industry market information, visit cattlefacts.com. Next on the Angus Report, Angus Link is the American Angus Association's new feeder cattle program. We'll be right back. The 
The American Angus Association launched its feeder cattle program at the end of August. Angus Link offers huge opportunities for producers looking to capitalize on their Angus genetics. The program's named Angus Link, okay, and, and, and it is. It's a link between the commercial guy, the seed stock guy, and the cattle feeder. Um, this, this matters because it's, uh, we, we all have good cattle. Cattle are marketed as, as, these are the best ones, okay? This is meat behind it. This is, uh, we can put numbers on paper. We can uh, put some validity to saying that these cattle will do what we say they will do. Um, from a feeder standpoint, if I was feeding those cattle, I'm, it, it takes, it mitigates the risk. You know, I mean, we can, uh, we can buy that set of cattle with confidence, knowing that, that if our choice select spread's good and we want to roll the dice and go to the grid with those cattle, being a cattle we haven't fed, we don't have history on, we can do that with some confidence that they're going to score well. In the Angus Link deal, if the producer scores over a 125, say on the grid deal, you know, I mean, that shows that, that they've got a good marbling score in their herd, uh, that, you know, if those cattle are going to go to the grid, uh, they're really well versed to, to market there. Um, Inversely, uh, you know, on the feeding, on the feedlot score, uh, points a little towards uh, daily gain, conversion, intake. Um, somebody can uh, take their herd, get those scores. If they're, say, they're a little short on the grid or something, they can uh, target some higher marbling genetics in their bulls and uh, move that score pretty quick. It improves the herd because it is a, you know, it's a, it's a number for the herd. Okay, and it's, it's not an individual, it's not this animal or that animal, it's a general trend, all right? So if we see in, in, in our Angus Link scores that our, uh, that our dollar B number isn't where we want it to be, or, or our G, we can go in and without losing sight of other traits, we can maybe increase our marbling score on our, on our seed stock. It's a, it's a measurement. Everybody wonders, and we talk about getting kill data back, and, every, and, uh, and that's sometimes a hard that gets lost in the shuffle. All right, well, this is, this is not kill data, but it's a good indication of what that would be. And so we can take the, these numbers and, and build off of, off of them. Facts are facts and numbers are numbers. And, and uh, you know, if, if we're scared of those numbers, making progress is gonna be a hard thing to do. So if those scores aren't where you want them to be, uh, you can, you know, the quickest way to improve a herd is through genetics, you know. So we can take those genetics and, and take those scores um, change our selection criteria a little bit and adjust them and we'll re-enroll next year in two years. You know, I, th I would like to see people enroll every year. The Angus Link deal is not only is a marketing tool for their calves and uh, helps promote them to feedlots and show the genetic merit and potential that those calves have for a feeder, but it's also a, uh, it's a gauge for them as to where their herd is and if there's a strong suit or a weak point, it can be addressed off of the Angus Link scores. If people are buying registered Angus bulls, the association and, and the seed stock segment of the breed has done a good job of transferring those bulls. They're all on file at the association. So the association is going to generate a list, going to send the producer that list. We go through that list and identify which bulls would have been potential sires of that marketing group. Paperwork's minimal. It's extremely easy. It probably takes no more than an hour to go through that. And it's a simple process. And the program's been really well received. Um, it's, it's uh, once they understand what it is on both the producer and the feedlot side, it's, uh, you know, I think people can really see the merit in the program. Um, it's easy to understand. It's uh, straightforward. Uh, I think going forward, it's gonna be a really powerful tool. Stay tuned. After a break, we'll fill you in on the revolutionary Angus Beef Bulletin redesign. The Angus Beef Bulletin debuted a new, colorful look this month. The publication, previously printed in black and white, now features color throughout, a new editorial mix and a bold new vision. Angus Beef Bulletin editor Shauna Hermel shares her vision for the well-respected publication. Last fall, um, we, as we were looking at how we were going to staff our editorial team uh, and the emphasis that the board and the association were placing on commercial producers, uh, it turned out to be a really good time to look at restructuring our editorial team into two teams. Um, we've now have an editorial team devoted to the Angus Journal audience and our seed stock audience, and we have the Beef Bulletin devoted to the Angus Beef Bulletin, our commercial audience. 
We feel there's a need for a broader information source available to the commercial cattlemen that can approach subjects for management, for marketing, um, for better use of our association programs. So by developing the Angus Beef Bulletin into um, a more visible publication, a more frequent publication, we can bring that source of information to our commercial customers. And we want them to get the top dollar for their calves. We want them to be able to best utilize the genetics that our breeders put out in the industry. 63,000 commercial cattlemen and women who actively purchase registered Angus cattle receive the bulletin five times every year. Hermel shares how she keeps the publication relevant and useful for readers. If you want to get the most out of your Angus genetics, uh, the Angus Beef Bulletin is a publication that you need to use as your go-to resource. Our editorial mix is focused on the management, business, and marketing aspects of the cattle industry. It has a real practical feel to it. We also definitely want to cover um, the association programs and services and do an explanation of those so that producers can get the most value out of those services. Um, I think people will find the Bulletin to be one of the most practical magazines in the industry. Our board and our staff are very uh, dedicated to making sure that when people buy um, an Angus bull, they're not just buying a bull, they're buying that uh, into a whole association that is there to serve them and help them to get more money for their cattle, um, to help them become better managers. So um, we're very invested in trying to make sure that those commercial customers um, can profit from the genetics they buy and develop that relationship with our association and their seed stock provider. Some of the new features that we have in our redesign include um, not only four colors throughout the publication, which has created a, a striking new look I hope people get a chance to see, um, but we've also gone through our editorial and we've freshened up some of our columns and we've added columns. We'd love to have people's feedback on our redesign and on the content, uh, as well as what stories they would like us to approach in the future and they can always get a hold of us. Uh, you can look on the website, angus.org, and send us your information or call Casey or myself at the office. We'd be glad to talk to you. All right, so Clint, have you had a chance to look through the new Beef Bulletin yet? Well, it's hot off the press, Bob, so here we are. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's all for this week's Angus Report. We'll return next week at this time for more cattle news and highlights. In the meantime, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's Angus TV for more from the Association. Thanks for joining us.